In this video, we want to dive into pooled host pools and some of the advanced concepts that you need to be aware of with things in the Azure AD Join Preview and what you should expect going forward. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Here's my pooled host pool that I've already provisioned and covered all the basic requirements for Azure AD Join to work. And if we look here at my session hosts in the pool, you can see that they're all available for connections. And in Azure Active Directory, we go to the Devices Blade and we confirm that my new session hosts are Azure AD joined. And here's the web client experience and I can log on to my pooled VMs and everything basically looks as it should and it's all transparent to the user like you would expect. As of today, this feature is in private preview and as you would normally expect, there are a few limitations, specifically for pooled host pools. But as things evolve, I will of course keep you updated. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click that button and ring the bell so that you can get the videos as soon as they become available. So let's first talk about your identities. We have two different kinds, cloud identities and hybrid identities. And up until now, Virtual Desktop has required you to sync your users from your traditional Active Directory over to Azure Active Directory using Azure AD Connect. But now you can use this feature with cloud native accounts that only live in Azure Active Directory. So here is my user cloud. And if I look at the directory sync parameter here, it says no. So he only lives in the cloud. He doesn't live in my regular AD at all. And over on the left there, you can go down to Azure role assignments and you can see all the rights that cloud has been given. You can see desktop virtualization user for the application group. That's standard virtual desktop access. And then additionally, he's been given virtual machine user login. And this grants him the permission that kind of stands in the place of where Active Directory was. It's what gives him the right to log on to this VM in the cloud through Azure AD Join. And you can see that it totally works. There I'm logged in with the user cloud. So let's go down the rabbit hole a little more with hybrid identities. Your hybrid identities can also work through Azure AD Join because your user still is a cloud user as well as a domain user. And this gives you some other advantages. Like when I log on with the user Cyborg on my pooled host pool, even though this session host is Azure AD joined, I can still access all of my traditional domain resources. So I can go to something like my domain's DFS share and there's multiple folders here as you can see. Some of them are my on-prem resources and others are Azure Files resources using Active Directory authentication, and I can open those as well. Now, wait a second, how can that be? I'm logged on to a VM that's Azure AD joint, so I'm not part of the domain, but yet I can still access domain resources. Well, that's because my user identity is part of that domain, and I have something that's called line of sight. This is where my Azure AD joined hosts can find my domain controllers through DNS. And that magic happens in our virtual network. In the VNet blade, we go down to DNS servers and here you would need to enter the IP address of your DNS boxes, which is normally your domain controllers. Oh, and if your domain controllers are on premise, you will need hybrid connectivity, which is a VPN or express route so that you can reach them. And this will only work for things that require user identity. If you have something that requires a machine identity like MSIX app attached, that's not going to work because your VM has no presence in your domain. So just keep that in mind. Now let's talk about the reason why most of you are probably here and that is FS Logix. Since we have multiple joined states, let's take them one at a time. First, domain join. No problem here, FS Logix has been working like this since day one, so that's real easy. Now hybrid join is where things get a little more interesting. This is supported because your hosts are domain joined as well as Azure AD joined, and your users will still need to be synced for all this to work, and everything works there just as you would expect. And the big question is, what about Azure AD joined VMs with FS Logix? And the answer today is no. And yes, so how can it be both? Well, if you have Azure AD joined hosts with cloud only accounts, then FS Logix is not going to work yet. 
but support for that is coming, so stay tuned. Now remember, there's two sides to FSLogix authentication, the Azure storage side and the Windows NTFS side. And since we don't have a domain controller with this full cloud scenario, we don't have a way to mimic Active Directory authentication yet. So stay tuned and I'll have a video on this as soon as the feature becomes available. But you did see a few minutes ago that I had an Azure AD joint session host with a hybrid user identity that had line of sight to my domain controllers and I can access my FSLogix file storage. So with this configuration, I'm able to complete the Kerberos authentication to FSLogix because my user account is what I'm granting permissions to and FSLogix will work. So just to prove the point, I'm gonna log in with another user, Black Adam. And when I go to do the sign in process, you can see right there, if you look real quick, FSLogix app service is starting up. When we get into Windows, I've already got all my profile stuff loaded. So let's go to the C drive, to the users folder, and you can see the local underscore black atom, which is the telltale sign of FSLogix, which you can verify in the registry here that I'm using Cloud Cache, and in the disk manager, there is my profile disk loaded. And then I can go up to my DFS share and go to my FSLogix folder, and there is my profile with the lock. And this works because if we go to Azure Active Directory and look at Black Adam, the directory sync option says yes. So he is a hybrid user with line of sight to my domain controllers. And if we click on Black Adam, go to the left for our user sign-ins and click the first item, which is my ABD login, you can see that we have the Azure Active Directory authentication. So all of this works in this sort of half semi hybrid state where I've still got everything up running in the cloud with Azure AD authentication and I have line of sight to a domain controller so I can do that Active Directory authentication for my FSLogix storage. So for those of you who want the 100% cloud only based users and whole soup to nuts solution, you've got to wait just a little bit longer. So let's take a minute and talk about the viable scenarios for pooled host pools that are Azure AD joined without FSLogix because there's a few things to consider. First is that when your users log on, they're going to have normal local Windows user profiles. But this is still a viable solution and there are two main use cases that I've done with my customers. First is a jump host farm. The second is remote applications. Now, a jump host farm is where you use virtual desktop as a way to get to other systems and manage multiple environments. Now, this was quite popular during the COVID pandemic when everyone was first starting to work from home and people needed just a, a quick way to get back up and running and log back in and use their computers that were in the office. And today, this is still a viable solution if you have to manage multiple domain environments from a single point of entry. And just a side note here, when I set up jump host farms, I always recommend using something like AppLocker or Defender Application Control. And that helps me to lock down and secure the environment so only the apps I want the users to use can function. As for the profiles and remote apps, when a user logs in, they don't really use most of their user profile information. So it's generally okay to not use FSLogix with remote apps unless the application requires specific settings or user data. Let's say that you have either a web browser or a Office app like Word. Now the Office app data will live probably in your user's OneDrive, so no FSLogix really needed. And the web browser doesn't contain any personal data, so if it's stored on a local profile, no big loss either. So all of that should work fine. But what if you need a settings file or customization stored in the user's profile somewhere? Applications like VS Code do this and place a settings.json file right in the app data folder. So without a persistent profile managed through FSLogix, the users are going to need to redo all their customizations every time they land on a new VM. But of course, there could be many exceptions to this, and I've covered that all in my other FSLogix videos on the channel. So if you need more information there, go check out either one of those videos. 
So support for full cloud Azure AD joined FS logics experiences that you are used to are coming. So again, subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss that video. Now, one last tip for today, and that is about your host pools. Remember that host pools are a collection of identically configured session hosts. So it is not recommended to combine your Azure Active Directory joined hosts with your domain joined hosts. They're managed differently, they need different RDP properties, and they should be in different pools. And of course, there's much more to come on this solution as we go towards that 100% cloud experience. And things are only going to get better with your feedback. So comment down below. Let me know what you think of Azure AD Join, how it could be improved, and what features you would like to see added. Thanks for joining, and I'll link to the next video over here in the series once it's ready. Click over, and I'll see you there. Happy learning.